Hey everyone, welcome to Wikcode, where in this video we're going to learn what Webpack plugins are and how to use them to work with the Webpack lifecycle. So what are Webpack plugins? Well, a plugin is a feature of Webpack that allows us to access or plug into Webpack's lifecycle. This allows us to do things such as configure global constants at compile time, monitor Webpack's compilation progress, create HTML files to serve bundles Webpack creates, and more. Essentially, plugins allow us to do anything that Webpack loaders can't do. To work with a plugin, we use the plugins key in a Webpack configuration file. The plugins key takes an array of plugins. Webpack plugins can be local, hosted on NPM, or even built into Webpack itself. No matter the case, a Webpack plugin is simply a JavaScript object. First, let's work with built-in plugins. So an example of a built-in Webpack plugin is the progress plugin. This plugin reports on the Webpack compilation progress. To use it, simply require Webpack, access it as a property, and then instantiate it. Now, if we run Webpack with this configuration, we will see logging written to the console. So, it was very quick, but if I burn it again, you can see it being listed there, the percentage of the progress. And now also, as Webpack plugins are JavaScript objects, we can configure them. For example, the progress plugin constructor can accept a function. So we can see now what we've done logged out here, but essentially this handler function accepts three properties. Percentage, indicating the compilation completion, which is a value between zero and one. Message, which is a message describing the currently executing task. And args, which are basically an array of additional descriptions of the current task. So now when we run Webpack, we can see information being logged. So the percentage, 84%, ceiling, chunk IDs, and so on. You can see cache, shutdown, emitting, things like that. Just more information on what Webpack is doing. And now let's talk about plugins on NPM. So there are also Webpack plugins present on NPM. For example, there's the HTML Webpack plugin, which generates an HTML file containing our bundled JavaScript file. This is useful if we have a content hash in our output bundle file name and want it automatically added to an index.html file. Is installable from npm under the package name HTML Webpack Plugin. We also install it as a development dependency by tagging on dash capital D. So after installing it, we need to import it and then instantiate it in our Webpack configuration file. Let's also use substitution to create a content hash. And now we can see our bundle with a content hash. I actually have nothing in the files, so that's why it's empty. But now we also have an HTML file, which is minified because the mode is in production. And then we can see our bundle added right here. And now let's talk about actually creating our own plugin. So under the hood, a Webpack plugin is simply a JavaScript object with a method called apply. This apply method has access to the Webpack compiler, which is what ultimately provides access to Webpack's lifecycle. For example, if we click into the HTML Webpack plugin, we can see this apply method. So looking through this typings declaration file, we can see apply here, also the compiler. Now to demonstrate this, let's create our own plugin called my plugin. So here, what we are doing is we are tapping into Webpack's lifecycle using this tap method on the desired part of the lifecycle. So for example, in done and in initialize. Initialize right here 
is called when a compiler object is initialized, and done is called when the compilation has completed. Different lifecycle hooks have different arguments provided to their callback functions. For example, the done here has stats as a provided to the callback function, while initialize doesn't have anything, any parameters. Now let's just run Webpack. We can see tapped and initialize called first, because that'll run before done, and then tapped into done is called next. So based on this output, we can see how each callback function is ran when that part of the Webpack lifecycle is reached. And all a plugin is, is just an object, a JavaScript object with this apply method that has access to the Webpack compiler. But so this is my video on Webpack plugins. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm trying to get back to you. But besides that, thank you and have a good one.